just give us everybody. Let's come on down and sing. If you would stand with us, let's do here at your table, Lord. Brother Kenny, will you lead us a prayer?
This is the first time we ever did this song. So we'll see how it goes. song. Thank you. And announcements. Tonight takes care of the Lord's Supper and we thank you for your presence here tonight. Your presence here tonight is telling the Lord Jesus Christ that you love him. We appreciate it so much. What do people absent say to the Lord? I wonder what they would say when they stand before Jesus Christ. Tuesday night will be our prayer wheel for our church. I hope you come at 7 o'clock Tuesday night. Also, Wednesday night will be our conference. And next Sunday, the Gideon speaker is supposed to be with us. So you all keep that in prayer. Uh, also, Kerry Cawley is going into 26 for back surgery at Brunswick. And uh, I understand Monroe Gill's at home now from his uh, ordeal with his wreck and also his surgery. And uh, Armin Dennison going in to Jessup Hospital in the morning for another knee replacement. He's already had one. He's going in for another knee replacement. Uh, we're just having a rash of operations of all kind. I'm assuming that Brother Buck will be out of the hospital tomorrow, but he'll be in rehabilitation somewhere uh, for another while. So we uh, keep him in our prayers. And uh, also Susie sat while she's taking her treatments. Kind of depressed. And if I get a chance, go by and see her, call her. He prayed for her. I know she would appreciate it. Marvin Walker also in critical condition with his heart. So keep those on the prayer list and the rest of them on our hearts and minds. We pray for the ones we have on our on our prayer list. So we thank you again tonight for being here. Uh, it is an honor to come to the Lord's table uh, for what he has done for us. It says remember. So we want to remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us for a little while tonight. Our Savior thought so much of us that he died for us. Looked like we'd want to live for him, don't it? Looked like we'd want to come and say, thank you, Lord, 
for what you've done. Well, we do want to thank the Lord, and we thank him tonight in his presence. Let us celebrate the Lord's Supper. That's what we should be doing. And it says as many times we do this, it does not tell us in the Bible how many times that we should celebrate the Lord's Supper. But as many times we do, he says, remember me. So as many times as we decide to do this, we need to remember the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's celebrate the Lord's Supper. And that's exactly what we will be doing tonight. Uh, in these verses of scriptures, you know, salvation is not a funeral, it's a feast. Now, we're coming in the time of the year of the Passover, Palm Sunday, Easter, all this is woven in together around Easter time. You know, well, Christians also has a Passover to keep. Remember I told you about the nation Israel this morning? Well, the Passover is about the nation Israel. But also, you and I, as Christians, we have a Passover also. It's in the New Testament, and... 1 Corinthians 5, 7, 8 says this, Plurge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, even, for even Christ our Passover is sanctified or sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, that is the Passover we're doing tonight, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice or wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let us go to the Lord again in prayer. Father, we thank you for this great occasion. There can be no greater occasion than what the Christians go through when we come to celebrate the Lord's Supper. We thank you, one here tonight was concerned enough to return the thanks, Father, for what you have given us through your death, burial, and resurrection. We praise you and we thank you. And, Father, we want to remember you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, what is a Passover all about as we going into the Passover, the time of the year, and Easter. That's not but three Sundays away. It's always moving from one uh, day to the next day from year to year. You know why Easter moves from not on a set date? Because our calendar years have 13 full moons. 13 full moons, and you count the fourth full moon after Christmas, which is the first of the year, and the fourth full moon in the next Sunday, whatever it falls on, whether it be in March or April, uh, be Chris, I mean, be, like I say Christmas, but be a great, great occasion. It's called Easter, always moving around. So what is it all about? Well, I'll tell you what the Passover is all about. It's about a lamb. It's about a lamb. And the background and the history is go back to Exodus chapter 12. As, uh, we talked a little bit about the lamb on Wednesday night in the 23rd Psalm. The lamb is a gentle and is weak and also he's defenseless. So, well, here Israel is in Egypt. Now, they was in bondage. And, uh, you know, Egypt is a symbol of sin, and they was in bondage under sin. It represents the world and the flesh and also the devil. Well, Pharaoh represents the devil, and bondage represents the flesh that keeps us in bondage without Jesus Christ. As I said, Egypt now represents the world, and Israelites was in bondage uh, with the world and with the flesh and with the devil. You and I may be under bondage because we're not saved. But once we're saved, we add a bondage. That's the Passover. We have, we have took the Passover by faith, what Jesus Christ done for, your, for you. And God saw his people there for 400 years in bondage. God said, I called you. You are my people, the nation of Israel, as I told you this morning. And he said, I'm going to bring you out. You're coming out. because he told me he was going to come out before they ever went in. And God always keeps his word. Now, to come out, Pharaoh didn't want to turn the people loose. Now, they were slaves. I mean, they'd done all the work for all the Egyptians. They built the pyramid. They'd done all the great work for Egyptians. But now, God said, I want you to turn them loose. But old Pharaoh, they didn't want to turn them loose. They was going to lose a great commodity of their workforce, and they didn't want them to leave. God said, I said, turn them loose. Well, they sent Moses to tell them to turn my people loose. Well, they didn't do it. So he sent 10 plagues to that Israel, I mean to the nation of Egypt. And they would not do it. Nine plagues. And y'all know the plagues, you know, one of fire and frogs and all those plagues. And, but the last plague was the death angel. God got their attention. 
And through your life and my life and the people that saved today, a lot of times he send plagues in our life. A lot of times he can't get people's attention. You see, people won't, won't come. They won't worship the Lord. He'll send another plague. Sometimes people won't listen. But you see, he always gets their attention. He's always got a way to get people's attention. And he will because he loves us too much to leave us like we are. Now we find out, he said, I'm going to send that death angel. And the firstborn of every family, the boy, is going to die unless there's blood on the side post and over the doorpost. If I see the blood. Now, in this same chapter 12 of Exodus and verse 13, it says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I'll pass over that house. And we find out this redemption is prophesied here in the Bible for us, and then we have redemption is provided for all by a lamb. This was a lamb of the Passover in the Old Testament, but it's a lamb, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. It was a spotless lamb, the lamb that they used. It was sacrifice uh, lamb or sacrificial lamb. It was a saving lamb, a shared lamb. Jesus Christ did the same thing for our Passover here. Jesus Christ is a spotless lamb. He never sinned, could not have sinned. You know what? He was a sacrificial lamb on the cross of Calvary. He was a saving lamb for his death, burial, and resurrection, but also he was a sheer lamb. So we find out what God has done here in redemption prophesied hundreds of years ago by a lamb. He provided. Verses 1 through 6 of Exodus chapter 12. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of a year for you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take of them on every man a lamb, according to the household of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now if the household be too small, you'll never find the house be too big for the lamb. But it was possible for not to be too many people in that house, not too many members of the family there. But if it's too small... What we do for that lamb? Let him and his neighbor go over to the next door for your neighbor next door to his house and take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to eat uh, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. There's a lot goes into this, what I just read to you. It would take me a while, like I did this morning, to explain everything that's going in this I just read to you. But this is a Passover lamb. Now, he was a spotless lamb. They had to pick a lamb, and this lamb had to be spotless, without any type of blemish whatsoever. No spot, no blemish, but anything on this lamb would disqualify this lamb. He was inspected with a real good. He's examined by the priest, this lamb was. Now, much like used to, we had like the country fair. Every year the fair would come to town, and you know, there was a lot of animals at the country fair, and there always would be examination and see which one you know, would be the show animal, which one would get the blue ribbon, would it be a, a whatever animal would be, a hog, a cow, you know, or a lamb, whatever it might be. A lot of times on television you see this, they check the, the dogs or animals and see you know, if they would be the blue ribbon winner because they couldn't have any blemish on them whatsoever. Well, they checked these lambs. I mean, and they was checking these lambs just like Jesus Christ was checked. Well, the sacrificial lamb, it was the 14th day of April. This month was April. Uh, in the afternoon, God told them exactly what to do and how to do about this lamb. You see, God's got a way. Mankind is not going to change God's way. I mean, we're trying as hard as we can in this country to change God's way. Well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It says the Father of the home. That means the daddies ought to make sure that his family is in church. That the father ought to make sure that his family is here tonight. That's what the Word of God says. The father would take this lamb and he would cut the throat of this little baby lamb and this blood would be caught in a basin. And in this basin, you see, it's a lesson for us to learn. They would take hyssop and make, make a little brush out of it. And they dip it in that blood and they sprinkle it on the doorpost and also on the little post. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Very important what we're doing here tonight. People might laugh at it, make fun of it, don't take it serious, but it is serious. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us. Why is the blood so important? Because a life is in the blood, according to 
the word of God. The wages of sin is death. Salvation is not uh, learning a lesson from the life of Christ as a lot of religious people try to do. Learning a lesson by the good life that Jesus Christ lived. But it's receiving life from the resurrection Christ, his death and the burial and his resurrection. That's where we receive our life from, from his resurrection. Not the good life that he lived. There's no saving power in the good life that he lived. It is in the death and burial and resurrection. He lived that good life so he could die on the cross without sin for our sins. But his death and his burial and his resurrection. So we see it was a sacrificial lamb, but also it was a saving lamb. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 7, And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and the upper door posts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop or a branch of hyssop and dip it in the blood like I just told you in a basin and strike it upon the little and two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of this house until the morning. And there's... 23 says, For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians, and, and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into that house to smite you. Well, y'all think this is serious? Just as we're looking at this blood tonight in the broken body of Jesus Christ to make sure that you and your family is under the blood of Jesus Christ. I want my family to know and to understand they need to be under the blood of Jesus Christ. And every parent, every mother, and every father ought to make sure their youngins understand what we're doing here tonight. Without exceptions, what this blood represents for us tonight. There are no substitute for the blood. There are no substitute for the blood. As you know, there's a lot of churches that quit singing from the hymn books. Other denominations has took the blood out of the, the hymn books. But as Baptists, we still have these old hymn books. But you see what they've done. A lot of churches have substituted songs they will not sing out of these old hymn books no more because it's bloody religion. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. A shared lamb, Exodus 12 and 8 says, And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Roasted with fire. All this is a picture of Jesus Christ, just like the tabernacle was this morning. All this is the same thing I'm telling you about Jesus Christ. Roasted with fire. You know, when Jesus Christ was on the cross of Calvary, the fire of God's wrath burned itself out on Jesus Christ on the cross. That's how important it is to be here tonight to see what he's done for you and for me. And bitter herbs, that should show the repentance in our heart to come and to worship a Savior was willing to die for you and for me and for the whole world. These bitter herbs, if we think remorse of a broken over our sin, is people really broken over their sin? Well, you can tell where we're at today in our country. The remorse and the sins. But unleavened bread. And tonight, you see, we have unleavened bread. And that's what it represents. And we know what living is, sin. Unleavened without sin. Israel walked out of Egypt. When they took that last plague, that lamb, and eat that lamb, those two and a half million people estimated walked out of Egypt, but a lamb walked out on the inside of every one of them. They walked out with a lamb inside of them. You know what the Bible says in the New Testament? Christ is a hope of our glory inside of you, inside of me tonight is our hope of our glory. This was a time when there was no work doing. The rest, because all had been done. That's when Jesus Christ says, and, and it shows, it is finished, it is finished, it is finished. And you go out with a staff in your hands, shoes on your feet, and your loins girded, ready to go to work for Jesus Christ. We don't work for our salvation. We work because we are saved. Ready to work. Thank the Lord for the Lamb. And the redemption is already prophesied in the Bible. But also this redemption is also provided by Jesus Christ. God has given us a lamb, a different Passover than what they had in the Old Testament. In Jeremiah 31, 31 and on, Behold, the day cometh 
saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, just like people are breaking right now today. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts and write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. God's going to get our attention. All know me, from the least of them, from a child. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. God says they're going to be a new covenant. God says he's going to get our attention, and I believe he will. Here God has prophesied about a new covenant, a new testament for you and I. John 1 and 29 is Jesus Christ being baptized. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now, he was a spotless lamb. I mean, he was spotless, no sin. And 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 also says, For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation that received by the tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. goes along with my sermon this morning. Now, whenever Jesus Christ was marching in to be crucified, in Jerusalem they was getting ready for the Passover to kill the lamb for the Passover. Jesus came to celebrate the Passover with the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and also there was the First Supper. The Last Supper was a Passover, and he will never take it again with him, he said. I'll read it to you in a moment. But then there was a first supper. This is the supper of the Lord, not the Passover. This is the supper of the Lord. Jesus Christ with his disciples, 12 of them, celebrated that Passover supper, the last one, with Judas there. But when Judas got up and left out to betray Jesus Christ, then he took and broke bread. There was only 11 of his disciples. This is the first supper of the Lord. That's what we're celebrating tonight, the first supper of the Lord. Now, whenever Jesus Christ was getting ready to be crucified, these sheep was coming in to the city to be examined for the Passover. You know, in Jerusalem, there was a wall around Jerusalem with 12 gates, three on one side, three on the other side, three on the other side, three on the other, 12. And all these gates has a name. One of those gates was named the Sheep Gate. That's where they brought the lambs into that area to be sacrificed, be checked, and be examined at the Passover time. This is the last week, and they was examined. It's like Jesus Christ was examined. These sheep was examined. For Jesus Christ is our sacrifice, and he's our sacrificial lamb. Now, Jesus Christ was also examined. Y'all know that? Just like these sheep was examined before they could be killed and sacrificed for the Passover, Jesus Christ was examined. He was examined by the Sadducees. If I had time, I'd tell you more about it. He was, he was by, the, by the Sadducees, also the Pharisees, by the priests at that time, and also by Pilate. I mean, he was really, really examined. I find no fault in this man. Well, we find out in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, as I've already read about our Passover, about the unleavened that we are. But this Lamb of Jesus Christ is a excuse me, is a saving lamb. Luke twenty two nineteen 19, and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which was given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new testament of my blood which is shed for you. Jesus Christ was a shared lamb. They shared that lamb at Passover night, but also Jesus Christ is shared today. Let's celebrate the Lord's Supper. If we look at this blood, there's three boys I'd like to tell you about. <clears throat> there was an Egyptian boy 
and there's two Jewish boys. This Egyptian boy was Pharaoh's oldest son. He said, Daddy, he said, I've heard that uh, the death angels come and cross our land. And that old man said, if you don't have the blood on the doorpost, the firstborn is going to die in every family. And he said, Daddy, you know what? I'm the firstborn. Pharaoh's son, I'm the firstborn, Daddy. A little bit worried about it. What Moses had been saying. Old Pharaoh said, well, don't you worry about that, son. We have the greatest army and the biggest military in the known world. We're the most powerful nation upon the face of this earth. At that time, they was. We got every guard. You're in the castle. They can nothing get through that door unless they come through the mighty army of the Egyptian army. We got guards day and night. We got all the military power that we need. They can nothing touch you, my son. Can nothing get to you. Death got to him because he died that night. See, your love for your children is not enough. I believe Pharaoh loved his son. But your love for your children is not enough to get them saved. They're not at church. They're not hearing the word of God because of parents. And the death angel is going to come, let me tell you. It's going to come. That boy died. There was another boy. Now, he was a Jewish boy. The firstborn. He said, Daddy, I'm the firstborn, you know, and... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to sleep too good tonight knowing that the death angel comes. He said, well, son, we, we've got the blood of the doorpost and the lentil. We, we've done just like Moses told us to do. We've killed the lamb. We've done everything. But I'm still a little bit nervous. And the boy went to sleep that night, but he didn't rest very well. He worked all night. But he woke up the next morning. He was safe. The death angel passed over because of the death angel seen the blood. But there was another boy, Jewish boy. He says, Daddy, I'm the firstborn in the house. And Moses said, you know, the death angel is going to come. I just wondered, uh, have we done everything? Yes, he says, son, you don't have to worry. We, we've got blood over the doorpost. We killed the lamb. We've done everything exactly like the word of God said, what the man of God said. We have done all this. Well, that young boy went to sleep, and he said he just slept like a log, perfectly safe. Now, what's the difference in these two boys? Both of them were safe. Because the blood makes you safe. Listen to me. How important it is to have your children in the house of God. The Word of God makes them sure. Don't forget that. The Word of God makes them sure. They saved by the blood. They saved by Jesus Christ. But you see, they may not feel saved. They may not act saved. They may not know if they saved. The Word of God makes them sure. And that is a great difference today because there's a lot of children don't even know if they saved or not. They don't have the Word. Church is a thing of the past in our country. You see the death and burial of old Billy Graham? Well, I'll tell you what, we buried this week more than just Billy Graham. We buried a way of life for Christianity. We buried a way of life for Christianity in most churches today. And most family members today have little care what concern at all about their children, about their family, about concern of the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't have that safety. The Word of God makes you sure. How do I know that I'm sure? Because of the Word of God. How do you know that you're sure tonight? By the word of God. I'm safe because of the blood, but I'm sure because of the word. And there's a great difference that every one of us needs to understand and be sure that we let our children know this. Because the generation is gone, the generation is past. I was thinking about this. When this church was established on the woodpile, Miss Lucille, and when there was a People had fought to keep this church going 
throughout the generations of Pleasant Hill. But you see what's happening? It's dying out. Generation do not want to carry the torch and pass it on to their children. Unconcerned about house of worship and what it means to come to worship Jesus Christ in a group sitting. And it's passing off. Not just at this church, but it's passing off across our nation. Worship service will never be again like it is and like it has been. Because people don't want to pay the price to hold on and to pass it on to their children. Now, I could say more, but I won't. But we're going to come to celebrate the Lord's Supper for a few moments now. We're going to ask our deacons if they'll come forward at this time, the front pews. As she begins to play, <clears throat> we're going to open the doors of the church. If anybody like to come to the altar before we start, anybody like to pray, as we will be praying for just a moment. So at this time, as they begin to play whatever song they have chose, we'll be praying and thanking the Lord as we bow our head in silent prayer at this time. Altar will be opened. Now we come to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And one of the greatest services that people as called Christians could be in this night. Luke chapter 22, verses 13 and on. Jesus Christ speaking. And the hour was come, and he sat down, and his apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I shall not eat it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he received a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I shall not drink from henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the cup in like manner after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. 
even that which is poured out for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it had been determined. But woe unto the man through whom he is betrayed. At this time, we now come to celebrate and observe the Lord's Supper and ordinance, given us to re be reminded of what Jesus Christ done, his broken body, and his shed blood. And Miss Sarah is going to sing a song at this time before we go in and be taken of this Lord's Supper. the deacons come at this time. <clears throat> it was said on that night before he was betrayed 
at the conclusion of the feast of the Passover, the last Passover, which he and the disciples were celebrating, he took bread and he blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which was given for you. Brother Ray, would you lead us in prayer? John chapter 6, verse 58. This is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as the Father ate and died, he that eateth this bread shall live forever. I would ask Miss Margaret, would she come now to song?
would ask the deacons to come forward this time. Can you imagine that night that Jesus Christ was taken to that last Passover meal for hundreds of years, knowing that he was fixing to be the Passover for the sins of the whole world? And then it said on that same night, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body and my blood which was shed for you. Brother Jim, would you leave some prayer?
Hebrews 9 and 22. And according to the law, I may almost say all things are cleansed with blood, and apart from the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. First Corinthians 11 and 26. As often, as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. And after the Lord and his disciples ate the bread and drank the wine, celebrating thus the first supper of the Lord, they went out. Will you stand at this time, please? Brother Johnny, would you just miss some prayer, please?